We are so you, Lord Father, we are here to worship you because, Lord, it's a privilege even to do so. Wherever you are this morning, you want to rise up in your rooms, wherever you are, setting up for the service, for what God is going to do in your life. Begin to lift your hands and begin to wave it as we worship you together. New wine, help me say, Holy, Holy, say. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to worship you. It's a may, maker of all universe. universe. It's an honor. It's an honor just to stand be. See, holy, holy is yeah. holy, holy God Almighty. Almighty. It's a privilege. Presence, maker, maker of all the universe. universe. It's an honor, it's an honor chance to, to stand before you with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. Proclaim the Lord, you reign. Proclaim the Lord, you reign. You 
glory give more the praise come on somebody celebrate the lord wherever you are just lift your handkerchiefs and wave it you don't have to be here before you worship him wherever you are you can worship him let your worship go as an incense let your worship go Greetings to you once again in the name of the Lord Jesus. We want to thank him for giving us another opportunity to be alive and to worship him. He is good and his mercy endures forever. This morning I have been burdened to talk about life and death. The offer of life and death is my title. This is because coronavirus is killing people in the hundreds of thousands. It has affected over 8 million people. In our country, over 12,000 with 58 deaths. But people are still not taking corona seriously. We are deliberately living our lives anyhow. And as a pastor, I've been so burdened to use this teaching or preaching to address the issue of life and death. My scripture is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 to 20, and Jeremiah chapter 21, verses 8. I will follow it with other scriptures. Deuteronomy 30. Verses 11 to 20. Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, second time, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if you hear, if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away, to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. Verses 19. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give you and your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jeremiah 21 verse 8. Furthermore, tell the people, this is what the Lord says. See, I am settling, setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Moses has led the Israelites from Egypt. They've crossed the Red Sea. They were about to enter the promised land. Because of sin and rebellion, all the older generation who left Egypt have been wiped away except Joshua and Caleb. 
This generation needed to know about the will and the precepts of God. So Deuteronomy or second law was written, Deutero and Nomos. It talks about their history, how God has dealt with their fathers and forefathers. By the way, because Moses had wronged the Lord, he was not about to enter the promised land. He was about to die. So after he has given them all the history and the past experiences, he gave them the opportunity to choose life and death. And the life was to obey the Lord, his principles, and live in his covenant. Or death was to disobey the Lord and do that which was right in their own eyes. That is the background of the text in Deuteronomy. You come to Jeremiah. The Israelites have sinned against the Lord. And God was so angry with them. He was going to throw them into captivity. So through the prophet, he said, Jerusalem is going to be captured by her enemies. So those of you who will leave Jerusalem will be saved. But those of you who will stay in will be killed. So it is up to them to make a choice. Either you live in Jerusalem and die or you go out. You know, here, the people had got what we call Zion theology. They believed that so long as you are in Zion or you are in Jerusalem, no matter what you do, even if you sin, you will be protected. But for this one, God said, if you live in Jerusalem, you are going to die. Life and death. God, through prophet Micah, had this to say to the people of Israel. Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O oh, mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Some of the translations said, He has shown you what is good, O oh, man. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, we read, There is a way that seems right, or that appears to be right, but the end leads to death. God created man according to his own image in, one, in Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 37. God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. What is the image of God? The ability to know the right from the wrong and ability to choose. So God did not make us zombies. We cannot be manipulated, but he has given us the will, free will, to choose life and death. You know the story of the Israelites. Anytime they obeyed the Lord and followed his paths and precepts, they lived. Anytime they chose to do that which they want, they died. Today we are living in the 21st century with crisis, pandemic called coronavirus, COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, severe acute respiratory syndrome, a virus that is killing thousands. Over 400,000 people have already died. Two, eight million are infected. Some have recovered. But it doesn't seem that there's, there is an end to this crisis. Our government and his covert team are doing what they could. As a man of God, I need to come in to speak to you this morning about choosing life or death by the way you and I react or respond to the coronavirus protocols. 
The Bible says all scriptures is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable or useful for teachings, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So today the scripture is profitable for teaching. So I am teaching you. I am guiding you. I am directing you. But then in Romans 15, 4, we also read, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance thought in the scriptures and the encouragement, they will provide hope. Brothers and sisters, plagues have killed people in the past, in their millions. When this COVID-19 came from China, of course, we did not know much about it. It came and spread like a white fire. And here we are in Ghana feeling the effect. We know how much the globe have felt the effect. Bigger nations are crumbling. Bigger institutions are crumbling. Bigger corporate entities, companies like British Airways, KLM, American Airlines, oil giants. Big economies like the American economy, British economy, German economy, French economy, China economy. And of course, our economy. Nations are bowing down because of the uncertainty and the fear that have come because of Corona. We thank God in the midst of Corona, some decisions have been made first. Everybody should stay in lockdown because we do not know much about the sickness. And all of us were locked down three weeks in Accra and Kumasi and other places. We saw the effect. We saw the impact. We saw the hunger. We saw the frustration. We saw the mental and the emotional distress. Right from our president, even to the children. Schools closed, churches closed. Everybody was in a state of panic and shock. This state of disbelief. But thank God, through the hard work of our scientists, through the hard work of our researchers, we have come to a second phase where we now say we don't have a cure, but we know the virus. We know how it is transmitted. We know how we can prevent the virus from moving from country to country, from person to person, and destroy us. Simply, the virus cannot walk by itself. It cannot fly by itself. It cannot move by itself. So it is carried, it is being transported by human, human to human. And when they go there, we know where they attack, the lungs, and how they can cause you to have difficulty in breathing, and how they can kill you in no time. But we know that some people also can be recovered and come back. We also know that how resources and money can be wasted because of COVID. Knowing the virus, knowing that there's no vaccine, knowing that it can destroy people, it leads us to the third level. New normal. How to prevent it from affecting and infecting people. When we were children, we had this. Prevention is better than cure. Already we are curing a lot and it is overstressing and stretching our limited resources. Some are saying the government has done well. Some are saying he could do well. Some are saying he's, do he's doing nothing. People are bringing politics here and there into such a dire situation 
which is unfortunate. But whatever the situation is, I want us to address the preventive method. Since we do not have cure, we can only manage it. It is affecting our medical personnel. They are being quarantined. They are dying. And the national wealth, all the resources are being diverted to, 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 to cure this disease. There is something we can do. Choose life. How do we choose life? Very, very simple. By obeying all the protocols that the scientists and those who are managing COVID has, have given us. First, we have been told that uh, this virus cannot move beyond one meter. It comes out of droplets as we talk. You can take it from me because there will be little droplets from my mouth. So when I'm with you in the crowd, or when I'm, I'm in a crowd or among people, I should wear face mask. This should be treated seriously and religiously for all of us, whether in churches, wherever there are public people, wherever you can pass it on to somebody. We have been advised by the scientists as much as possible to maintain social distancing. That is, stand away at least a meter apart from other people because the virus is not hanging in the air. We should avoid touching people, greeting people, hugging people. So long as we maintain this social distancing, be it in our homes, be it in the trotters, be it in the schools, wherever we are, we can prevent the spread of the virus. We have been advised the regular washing of hands by soap in a running water can help prevent the spread of the virus because if you touch the virus or the virus get to your hands, you can touch your eyes, your nose or your mouth and you will get it or you can transmit it to someone through that means. So regular hand washing in a running water. 70% alcohol-based sanitizer has also been recommended. Applying it as often as possible as we are touching surfaces or we are touching objects. This is the life, the choice that we have to make. It is not easy that is why we are saying we are in the new normal. So I'm repeating it as you are listening to me. Today, choose life by wearing the face mask, especially when you are within a crowd or you are within a group of people. Because you may either send it to somebody you do not, he doesn't know and you do not know, or somebody can pass it on to you. It takes about 2 to 14 days for this virus to incubate. And you don't know how many people you can touch them, you can affect or infect them. So please, our nose masks should be regular, especially when we are in the presence of people. Yes, it is not comfortable. We still struggle in breathing. It has changed everything. But this is the new normal. We must also try to maintain the social distancing at all times, in churches, at homes, everywhere. We must avoid greeting, touching, hugging one another as much as possible. And we must frequently, I mean frequently and regularly maintain enhanced personal hygiene by regularly Washing our hands with running water, use a tissue paper, throw them in the bin, and of course, use sanitizers as much as possible. When we do this, we can carry on life in the midst of this corona. We cannot stop activities, we cannot stop 
to allow our economy cease. We cannot stop to allow the churches being closed together. We cannot sit down for the schools not to reopen. The system and society should continue. Life must go on, but we should have to make a godly choice. Life and death. To live is to acknowledge all the pieces of advice that we are being given. But of course, we must also pray to God to intervene. Yes, we have also been advised that these diseases have no cure, but another way of helping is eating well, boosting our immune system, doing some form of exercise, and helping ourselves to come out of it. So, that is life. You can choose death. In choosing death, you don't have to do much. Refuse to wear the nose mask at all times. Refuse to wash your hands regularly and refuse to apply the sanitizers. Refuse to maintain the social distances and refuse to obey all the advice the scientists have given us. And quickly you will die. And who loses? Your family loses. Your children. You lose your own life. Especially if you don't have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. It becomes a double loss. You bring pain and grief to somebody. I am pleading, brothers and sisters who are hearing me. Fellow Christians. I am declaring unto you life. And the life is observing all the protocols. Today my sermon is offer of life and death. And so long as this corona period is concerned, the life and death is how to live through this period by obeying all the hygienic protocols. It shall pass. It will go. It won't be forever. But we have a part to play. So long as we will stop transmitting it from Mr. A to Mr. B, Sister A to Sister B, so long as we are our brother's keepers by protecting ourselves and protecting them, so long as we observe all the enhanced hygienic protocols, then there is life. I will say, why don't you stay home if you don't have anything to do outside? But if you want to go outside to do that, what you have to do? Why don't you take all the necessary cautions and pre precautions for the sake of our feeble, weak, fragile economy? For the sake of your life, for the sake of the life of those you, you work with. Because of you, hundreds of people you, 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 we need, will need to be traced, will need to be tested, and will need to be treated. How much is it going to cost the nation? That, do, will you even enjoy being quarantined for two weeks without interacting with anyone? Now that we have the life, I am pleading as a man of God, as you are hearing me today, to choose life. Let us choose life. Life and death is in your hands. You have the power to live. You have the power to survive. For the sake of our mother country, for the sake of the frontline workers, the nurses and the doctors and the paramedics who are dying because they want to take care of you. For the sake of all the resources that have been told because of this corona, every resource has been turned to it and people are dying from other non-communicable diseases like cancer, high blood pressure, and diabetes, and the rest. We, are run, we have run short of medical staff. It is serious. Coronavirus is not a joking man. Coronavirus is not a matter of laughing. Coronavirus is not a, it's not a matter of, you know, treating it lightly. 
The future of Ghana depends upon how we behave now. The future of your family depends upon how we behave now. The future of your children, your own future, we can make it. Brothers and sisters, as I've checked the internet, as I listen to the news, as I see the world grasping with the effects of Corona, and as I see the rebellion, the indiscipline, people are willingness to observe the protocols. How can we claim as a nation of 70% Christians who knows God and then we live in a life disobeying even our leaders, disobeying our scientists, disobeying the scriptures and living anyhow. God's word is telling us that. Life and death is in our hands. We can choose life or we can choose death. I am painfully expressing my sadness by the trend that many people in Ghana have chosen to go. There may be no justification whatsoever for us to deliberately choose death. One soul, one person's life is enough. Because of indiscipline, see how we suffer motor accidents. See how we suffer from ma ma malaria. See how we suffer from floods. See how we suffer from a lot of preventable diseases. We can make it if we have the willpower. We can make it if we decide to choose life. This life is so precious. This life is so lovely. This life is so important. That's why God sent his one and only begotten son to come and die for you and I. So that we will not only live and enjoy this life, but we also enjoy the life to come. Let us do everything possible. My fellow believers, my fellow Ghanaians, let us do whatever we have in our power, in our hands, to preserve our generation and to preserve another generation. Others have done it. Other nations have done it. Others are doing it. And we can do it. And now the churches, the privileges that have been given to us to go and worship God. Let us not go there to bring a second spike. Let us prove the skeptics wrong. People think that the churches are the center or the harbor of coronavirus. Open the churches and you spread the corona. I am saying, open the churches and you limit the spread of the corona. May God help us and bless us as we all pray together, seek his face, and, ask, and depend upon him for solution. This shall pass, but we also need to be up and doing. Choose life and live. God bless you. Amen. This message comes to you from Assemblies of God, Ghana. You are always welcome to listen to us. Whenever you are available, visit the Assemblies of God Church in your area. If there is no Assemblies of God Church, you can visit any Bible-believing church. Tune in to TV Africa this and every Sunday evening, 5.30, to worship of us. God bless you. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you grant us the grace to go through this pandemic together and come out successfully to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Choose life and live. Bye-bye. He is God. He is telling us, come to me. Stop worrying. Begin to run to him and he will make everything new. 
He said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. 